this season was Festacock. The other one, also against Edmonton. They beat the Oilers by a count of seven. My favorite line of the whole thing. Their hosts are big names, and they have...
an upbeat note to remember if the reporting from COP27 gets you down. Thank you to Insaf Ben of Men for delivering it. You can find Ryan, links to her, take to the, the exit, report, and to on all the, right the other stories to from today's Transnational Cleveland webpage on bbcworldservice.com. But for now, from me, Roland Pease, and producer Sophie Ormiston, thanks for listening. Weekly mornings are a juggle, sometimes even a struggle. Morning edition from NPR News eases you into your day and keeps you company through the chaos of a busy morning. Hear interviews that give you context on the day's biggest stories, along with reporting and updates on the latest breaking news. Stay on top of the world with Morning Edition every weekday. Weekday mornings from 5 until 9 on 89.7 NPR News. Here to help you make sense of this new economic reality. We know that you rely on trusted journalism Take the exit. to navigate this the uncertainty. Right to and that's a I privilege and responsibility that public Cleveland. media takes seriously. And we are committed to connecting the dots for you through these times. So please, join me, Kai Rizdal, every weekday on Marketplace. Weekday evenings at 6 on WOSU 89.7 FM, Columbus. It's five o'clock in London. Hello and welcome to Newsday on the BBC World Service with Bolo Mossoro and James Cognor. Our top story today comes from Russia's ongoing invasion of Ukraine. We speak to a woman who says her sister was publicly hanged by the Russians after she spoke out against the occupation. The United States is to step up its efforts to seize assets held by Russian businessmen. The links to the Kremlin will tell you how they are targeting the oligarch superiors. Scientists have found a way to successfully modify the immune system so that it attacks cancer tumors. We'll hear how this works through gene editing and what sort of impact it could have in the fight against the illness. And we'll head to China to find out why the country is determined to remain resolute in its tough COVID lockdowns. All that as well as sport and business on Newsday after the latest world news. David Harper with the BBC News. The president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, says his forces have retaken the city of 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 the withdrawal from Kherson is a blow to what Vladimir Putin calls his special operation. In their reporting of the story, Russian newspapers were full of photos of Defense Minister Shoigu and Russian General Solovikin. A sign of the wants the army to own this Take decision exit and is keen to try to On distance the, the president to I-71 from it. North. Vladimir Putin has yet to comment publicly on the withdrawal. Barely six weeks ago, the Kremlin had declared that Kherson it would be part of, of Russia forever. Keep left to forever I-71 North. Long. The United States has promised to step up its efforts to seize super yachts and other assets held by Russian businessmen with links to the Kremlin. The U.S. Klepto Capture Task Force has warned a sanctioned oligarchs that face a new wave of arrests and asset seizures. Its director, Andrew Adams, told the BBC his task force had seized a super yacht that secretly crossed the Pacific after the invasion of Ukraine. Lawyers for the Russian oligarch Suleiman Karimov deny American Keep claims that he to I-71 North. Aldea. Scientists in the United States say they've been able to redesign the immune systems of a small group of people with untreatable cancers so that they attack their own tumors. The team based in Los Angeles said they used genetic on techniques to increase the number of T cells in patients' blood that are able to hunt down cancer. 16 patients took part in the study. James Gallagher has more. This is a really, really early stage piece of research. The main findings were that it was a safe therapy and that those cells, once they were put back inside the body, were able to target the cancer and actually migrate through the body to find where it was. But in the study of those 16 patients, 11 people's cancers continued to get worse, but five of them stabilized. And these were people that had untreatable cancers that all other cancers had failed for. So it's going to take more research to work out exactly how you optimize it and how it's effective it's not it is, but it's a promising early start. Brazil's president-elect Luis Inácio
Brazil, Lula da Silva has dismissed financial market fears after he made a speech to members of Congress promising to increase social spending to tackle extreme poverty and hunger. The main stock exchange index fell sharply on Thursday as investors expressed concerns that his program is too ambitious and unsustainable. Lula said that the well-being of the Brazilian people should come before an obsession with fiscal stability. Well, news from the BBC. So they're making it worse. Donald Trump has strongly criticized the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, who has emerged as his main rival in the Republican Party after he stalked to re-election in the U.S. midterms. Mr. Trump dismissed Mr. DeSantis as a political lightweight who should stop playing games and rule out a bid for the presidency. Wow. Talks in Kenya between representatives of the northern Ethiopian region of Tigray and the government in Addis Ababa are expected to end on Friday. Both parties have been to discuss the implementation of a peace deal signed last week in South Africa. Ethiopia's government and the Tigray People's Liberation Front have committed to ending two years of fighting. The deal calls for aid deliveries to restart in Tigray and for essential services to be restored. Here in Britain, a filmmaking social club that's been holding meetings since 1932 